Hi everyone, welcome to Itchy Itchy's live read of Lavender Field by Natalia Reese. Falling. Sky. What's happening? I mumbled to myself. My mouth was parched and my eyelids, heavy as lead, struggled to open. A silver, a bright light reached my eyes and I rapidly blinked. Trying to force away the fogginess in my brain, slow, painfully slow, my eyes adjusted to the shock of the sudden brightness and fluttered open. Was I dreaming, or were there five pairs of, uh, of round flickering orbs floating above me? I blinked again and wiped what was left of my sleep-induced blurriness with my hand. Not orbs. Eyes. There were five pairs of eyes staring at me. Three brown, one blue, but the... But it was the fifth one that caught my attention. There was something odd about them. Not odd ugly, but rather beautiful like a pair of very rare gems. They didn't match. One was emerald green, the other a deep shade of violet. I had seen wind-whipped fields of lavender, but none as enticing as the color mix of those eyes. Hearing, my hearing was coming back as well. I could hear their hushed voices as they murmured to each other, wondering who, or more appropriately, what I was. It wasn't the first time something unexpected like this happened to me. I was well known among my people as the klutz, the accident-prone one. My direct supervisor addressed me as the liability. One of these days you're going to really mess up things for all of us, he was known to say. As much as I would rather disagree, I couldn't. The truth was, I was indeed a genuine klutz, someone who seemed to attract disaster, and worse, in my line of work, attention. What are you? I heard a soft voice say. I blinked again and matched the voice to the owner of the strange pair of eyes. It was a male, possibly in his mid to late twenties. In fact, now that my vision had cleared, I realized they were all young men all staring at me curiously. With a groan, I attempted sitting up, but my head spun and I fell, up, and I fell onto my back again. Easy, the multicolored man said, reaching out to support me and help me. You must have bumped your head. Had I ever. My descent from had been abrupt, steep, and speedy. My body had picked up speed as it approached the ground, and even though I remember the fall onto the beach, the second I hit the sand had ruptured my memory. That was by far my biggest fall ever. The man with the odd eyes slipped his hands under my arms and pulled me to my feet carefully. There's no blood, he told me, after checking the back of my head. I think you'll be all right. I brushed my, dream I brushed my jeans and my black t-shirt, which were covered in sand. I'm Caleb, Mr. Lavenderfield said, offering a hand in welcome. These are my friends. We were out for a walk on the beach and found you unconscious. As I shook each of their hands, I studied them. They seemed to be in shock, almost in awe, as they studied me in turn. I must have looked a fright, covered in sand and gravel. I seemed to have, to have obliviated a big rock as I fell. As if I had been dumped on a dump, as if I had been dumped on by a construction truck. Who are you? The one called Caleb asked me. He seemed to be the only one who had fully functioning vocal cords. Sky, I answered, my throat scratchy from disuse. I hadn't used it in a very long time. I cleared my throat. Thank you for coming to my rescue, even though, truth be told, I was in no need of rescuing. My kind did not get hurt in human sense of the word. May I ask you what you are? Now that was a loaded and strange question. I look like any other human, maybe a little paler around my freckles, my blonde hair streaked with more silver than in most people of my, of my perceived age, but rather than I look like a regular everyday human. My eyebrow arched in question and I noticed his small pointing nod toward my back. Heavens! In the chaos of the fall, the loss of consciousness, and my genuine klutziness, I had forgotten to hide my wings. There they were, unfurled into their full glory, fluttering in the breeze like giant butterfly wings. Strikes, strike three for the clumsiest angel and Raphael's crew. 
Well, what exactly can I say? I'm a freaking angel. Deal with it. I was trying to get my new wings for the upcoming Comic-Con. Lying shouldn't, shouldn't come so easily for an angel. Judging by the relief on everyone's faces, I knew they believed me, all but Caleb, who was boring into my soul with those eyes. I don't believe it, he whispered for my ears, only. I blinked and looked around, but the other man, men were moving away already, relaxed in the knowledge that I was just a regular geeky human. Well, it's true, I said, my lie weighing heavily on my conscience. An angel should never lie, ever, but this one... This was for a good cause. I couldn't out a whole race of creatures because I couldn't keep my flying speed under control. Could I? He pulled me aside, our backs, and now my retracted wings to the others. You're an angel. It was not a question. I've seen one of your kind before. So I wasn't the only clumsy angel in the realm. That was oddly comforting. What about you, I asked, scanning his face for an answer. Who has eyes like that? Caleb smiled. He had the sunniest smile I had ever seen. Something in, stirred inside of me. Hectorochromedia. It runs in the family, he said with a soft chuckle. It's a birth defect. We sat down on a big rock facing the ocean. More like a gift, I said, before I could stop myself. Why was I trying to impress this human with my silvery tongue? I had never been too flirty or too or too into the dating scene among my kind or humankind. As an angel, my proverbial plate was pretty full already with all my chores and responsibilities. Of course, we did get free time that ther theoretically could be used for romance, but I would have to stop making so many mistakes. My free time was spent mostly fixing my, mes my mess-ups, leaving very little time for fun. The striking young man blushed at my comment, and my angel heart fluttered. How sweet was that? Is it hard? he asked, his hand shyly inching toward mine on the rock between us. To be an angel, I mean. What do you do exactly? It's hard only when you're the biggest klutz in the history of heaven like I am, I said, laughing and breaching the space between our hands. His was warm and soft beneath mine. Literally electric shock started with the contact and crawled up my arm. I had forgotten how nice this was. His amazing mismatched eyes came to rest on mine, and my insides came alive with the force of a hurricane. What happened to you? he asked, his voice lowering an octave, fingers interlacing with mine. How did you fall? Are you a fallen angel? I'm falling for you. Seriously, what kind of magic was this human performing on me? I couldn't remember the last time I had feelings for anyone, and there was, there I was, quite literally, falling for him. No, I'm just a regular angel here to collect a soul, I said. Then he immediately regretted it. How could I sound any creepier? Collecting souls. You're an angel of death? He didn't look scared, merely in intrigued. This one was a hard one to impress. Well, I guess so, I said, my hand itching to pull him closer. On my way, I lost control of my speed and crashed, because as usual, I was going too fast. The souls don't mind waiting, Sky. Raphael always said. They can wait. They're not going anywhere. But I had the superstitious streak that always feared the other side would get there first and collect the soul I was after. It didn't work like that, of course. You, could steal a, you couldn't steal a soul. When a human died, their souls knew, even if their living bodies didn't, which, was way, which way they were going. It was either up or down, and by, the time it was too late to, and by that time it was too late to change destination. How is it done, the harvesting of souls, he asked, curiously lightening my amazing eyes. Do you have to ma watch them die like the Grim Reaper, Reaper? That was too morbid even for this angel. No, nothing like that, I explained. We're given a list, sometimes with only one name, other times many. We get the name, place, time, and so, and so we're prepared the manner of death. 
I try to get there as soon as possible after they pass so I can bring them the solace, solace of heaven as quickly as I can and hopes the joy of a heavenly ever after will compensate for the loss of loved ones. Caleb was silent. He slumped, playing, playing havoc with my senses as he brushed it against the palm of my hand. I don't envy your job, he said. You may be taking them to heaven, but also away from everything and everyone they'd ever known or loved. It can't be easy. He was right about that. I've been trying for years to switch to the Guardian Angel Patrol, but I'm too much of a screw-up to elect Raphael's trust. At least my charges are already dead. There isn't much harm I can do them now. Caleb laughed, then scooted closer to me. I sank against his heat, suddenly starved for his touch. Are angels allowed to date humans? he asked suddenly, a faint blush spreading across his cheeks. I looked around, realizing the others had left us alone on the beach. I furled my white wings fully and, like a peacock, strutted them shamelessly. Then I tilted his chin up and kissed him, slowly and timidly at first, not sure of what his reaction would be, but his lips hungrily devoured mine. My angelic body turned to mush as his arms encircled my waist and pulled me against him. I buried my fingers into the silky folds of his black hair, drawing him closer. Folding my wings around us like a protective cocoon, I allowed myself a moment of total selfishness. I'd been an angel for a few hundred years, but I was certain I had been created for that single moment in time. I didn't want to go, and for a second... I considered handling, handing in my resignation and becoming a mere mortal so I could spend a few years loving this human. His lips tasted of milk and honey, better than anything I had ever tasted before. I wanted to linger on them, savoring him, craving more of him. I wanted to lose myself in the lavender fields of his eyes, but of course I couldn't. Not right then. Not yet. I had a soul to collect. I sighed, ending the kiss. I have to go, Caleb, I said, souls to save and all that. Caleb brushed his hands across, his, across my face in a tender yet electrifying caress. Wings aside, he said, hot gaze meeting mine. You are the most beautiful man I have ever met. A silly smile stretched across my lips. I'll be back, I whispered, standing reluctantly. Give me your full name and I'll find you. I had heaven's complete directory of living souls, after all. Caleb Pierce, he said, kissing me one last time. With a great flap of my wings, I flew away, my heart already longing for Caleb's eyes. I, harvard, I would harvest my, soul, my assigned soul and come back to his arms. I watched him from above as he waved at me and then walked a few yards to the beach parking lot and climbed on his motorcycle and drove away. Taking a deep breath, I dug in my pocket for the name of the an address of the soul I was to harvest. The small piece of paper was rolled into a tight little cylinder that I fought to unroll. I hoped I hadn't made the soul wait too long. It was after si it was five after six in the afternoon, and the sun was starting to descend into the ocean. The note, the paper note, held the deadly power of a dagger to my heart, and for in a lonely, for in it a lonely name had been scribbled in careless script, a name that a mere hour before would have held any particular, wouldn't have held any particular meeting, but that meant the world to me now. Caleb Pierce, 6, 10 p.m., Sunset Beach Avenue, motorcycle accident. Thank you for listening to this portion.